Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today we're gonna to keep working on that feasibility and value matrix that we were working on. Today I wanted to create components for our circles, and we can change the colors of them, and we can also add the ID, and we'll go into why we're gonna create a component instead of just using a circle. And then we're gonna just color them based on where it is in the matrix. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Let's get into this and finish out this matrix. All right, so take a look at this. Since last time, there was one thing I changed. I changed my question, question to how difficult is this to implement? I felt like that was a better question than how easy. Right now, I have four points. So I can uh, map a point out, submit, and it's gonna put that point on the map. So my issue right now is when we look at this feasibility matrix, we don't know which point is which. Right, ID one, which one is ID one? We could probably look it up and look up the nine value and the five, it's probably here. But I wanna identify that in my circle in the graph. So I want the ID value right here. In order to do that, I'm gonna create a component. And the reason I'm gonna create a component is if you go to your circles, your circles that are in con uh, container two, there's no text value, there's no place we can write. So I'm going to combine a circle with a text label into one piece called a component. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over here to the left side over here. We have screens. You see that? Screens and components. I'm going to click on components and new component. Now the size of my component is not that big. My circle was 25 by 25. That's how big my circles were. But I want a little bit of width to give me more space to write something. So I'm gonna give it maybe a 100. So here's my component here, and I'm gonna insert a circle. And the circle is gonna be 25 by 25. So it's gonna be over here on the far left, and then we're gonna have a label on the right side. So I'm just gonna insert a text label. And this text label will be right there, that seems fine. So now we've combined a circle and a, com and a label together. So on my component, I'm gonna have two custom properties. We can see I have new custom properties. I'm gonna have a new custom property and this is gonna be the uh, label ID. I guess we'll call it label ID, that's what this is. Because we wanna write what the ID is in there. Maybe you wanna write title instead, you could do that. But it's of data type text. So it's just a text type. I'm gonna click create. Next, I'm gonna create another custom property. And this one is gonna be my color. So we'll call this circle color. And of this data type, it's gonna be of type color. So right now, you can see right above me here, we have text and color. Now we want to associate those with our component. So the label, on label one here, the text is gonna be equal to our component name, which is called component one right now, and then that field that we just created, so label ID. So that's gonna be equal to label ID. Now the circle, the fill, is gonna be equal to, to our component name, component one, dot circle color. So now we've associated both of those, the fill of the circle, and the ID of the text to the component. So I'm gonna come back to my screen. So right now in our screen, we have a container two, maybe yours is a container one because I created multiple of them. But what we're gonna do is instead of a circle, we see we have one, two, three, four, I'm gonna just come, come to container two and insert a custom component one. And this component one you can see is a circle but the label ID, the text value, or the label ID, is gonna be the same as that lookup that we used before. So if we come to the X value of one of our circles, we can see we looked up the ID. Let's just copy that. I'm just gonna copy that right there. And I'm gonna do here, but instead of it being the number feasibility, we want this to be, I believe, just ID. So that's correct there. So just an ID. So it's circle one ID and 
we're going to take the x value of circle 1 and put it on component 1. So x value here. And now the y value of circle 1, we're just going to copy paste again. The y value of circle 1 is also going to be there. All right, so now we've replaced that. So I'm going to delete circle 1. I'll just rename this circle 1. All right, so I'm going to do that for, I'm going to do it for 10 times, but let's do it one more time. So I'm going to delete circle 2. I'm going to insert a component 1. I'm going to rename it circle 2. Now the label ID, I'm just going to paste in what I had in there before. Instead of business value, this is our output that we want. It's just going to be ID. And this is going to be a number 2. So we're going to look up in our collection circles of ID, ID type 2, the ID. And in the X value, we'll paste that in. This is the business value of ID number 2. And the Y is the business value of, or not the business value, the feasibility of ID number 2. So now we have two in there. It looks like my circle's not fitting in there perfectly. So let me fix that. I do want the circle to be perfectly fit in there. So I'm going to go back to my component. And on component one, I'm going to increase the height to maybe 27. And maybe push the circle over just two so it fits in there perfectly. And maybe I'll pull it down one also. The Y will be a, a one. That way we're not, you know, cutting off our circle and it fits in there completely. All right, so now I'm going to create 10 of those. So I'm going to create 10 components of my circles. Okay, so I have my 10 circles mapped out now. So I have 10 component circles. So I can plot them out right now and plot up to 10 different points in my graph. And now I have an ID to reference it on. So that really helps me. Now I know, you know, where my circles are and how to read them. So let me just put 10 on there just so we know that we actually have 10. All right, so we have 10. We have 10 circles that are able to be plotted on there. Now, one thing that was driving me crazy was this initial circle. I want to change the visibility of it. And to do that, let me show you how I thought about this. So I, I did a label, and I said this label was equal to my variable ID. So my variable ID right now is equal to zero. So for the visibility of my circle components, I'm just saying if the variable ID is greater than or equal to one, then it's visible, else it's false. For circle two, if it's greater than two, then it's or equal to two, then it's visible else it's false. So as we plot them, they start plotting, but those other ones are not visible. So that an uh, initial circle is not there. All right, so that's how I did my visibility. Now I want to work on the colors. So this is where opinion comes in a little bit. I want this bottom left to be red, these two to be orange, everything else is green. Low value but easy, still kind of green, is green. Low value but medium, still green. High value, all this area here is green. But bottom right and center bottom is orange. And then the bottom left is red. That's the area we don't want to be. We don't want to be and with a low value and very difficult to do. On my container, container one, how are we gonna do the color? The color is gonna be this circle color. This is the property that we created. So we're gonna do a lookup, just like we did before, just like we did on the Y value and the X value, we're gonna do a lookup on the circle color. We're gonna say if, when we look it up, is greater than, let's see, if, if it's greater than 7, then it's um, red, else it's color.green. 
Let's see, and we're missing a parentheses right here. So here we are. If we look up our ID1 and the feasibility is greater than seven, then it's red else it's green. And we wanna say feasibility. Feasibility is how difficult is it to implement. If it's greater than seven, then it should be of red color, and it is. If it's less than seven, it should be a green color. Okay, so instead of letting you watch me struggle to create this, I just went ahead and, and made the statement. You kind of understood the beginning of it, but I, I don't want to sit there and waste all our time with you watching me struggle create this. But we're going to say if the lookup column is greater than seven and the business value is less than or equal to three, then it's red. So that's this area right here. But if the lookup of ID of feasibility is greater than seven and the business value is greater than one or greater than or equal to one, then it's orange, else it's green. So check this out. That's the formula. I'll put it in the description of the video. You can modify it how you want, but let's check it out. I'm gonna copy and paste it on the first three circles. So when you update it on a next circle, you need to update the ID values. So all of these should be two. ID two, ID two. And on this one, circle color, ID three. So let's check it out. My first three ID points should work. So if we're at eight and a two, we're red. But if we're at eight and a four, we're orange. But if we're at three and a three, we're green. So you see this area right here is in our red. This is our red area. All the way, these two uh, squares are gonna be orange. So let's go ahead and just paste that all the way down. So I'm gonna do that for all my points now. So we have orange all the way over there. There's one thing that I don't like that we'll get into. So let's just kind of double check. That's still green, a one, one. So that should be up here. It's very difficult, but no value. It's there. Let's do a three on the difficulty. So yeah, we're still in the green. And then a five, five should be green. So you can see how we have all that. There's one thing I don't like, and that's when I do a 10 and a number. Uh, that one works, but a 10 down here, it kind of cuts it off. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my container. I'm just gonna increase the width right here, the width to 620 and the height to 620. That kind of increases my container size. There's one more thing you could do and that's the drop shadow. Turn that to none so there's no border. So no one's gonna notice, but now you can see my nine fits in there. Now to just make this perfect, I'm gonna insert some squares or rectangles. I'm gonna insert rectangles on each of my matrices. And then I'm gonna send these to the back, reorder send to the back. So that way my circles appear. Now for the color, for the fill, I'm gonna just say this is 0.1. 0.2 for the alpha value. So now I'm just going to kind of do that with my rectangles. Okay, I believe we almost have a full complete app now. So if we check it out and we clear, we can then see our, our projects as they get set on the matrices. And I believe we have a full app here. I really like this app. Next steps would be probably to patch or write this to like a data set if you wanted to. So on your submit button, you can add a patch. I'm not gonna add it for these videos. I have other videos on how to patch, but this was just using collections and showing you how to create a feasibility and business matrix. I'm not expecting you to completely copy this app, but I believe this is the start of something even better than I show here. So thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. If this is helpful, please like and subscribe. I know all of you can create better than what we did here, but this is the start of something that could be really awesome. Maybe there's other type of matrices that you wanna create. My name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next week.